Hi there. Welcome to Discussions with the Fashion Masters. My name is Deanna Hansen. I'm the founder of Fluid Isometrics and Block Therapy, and I have a very special guest, Richard Fluke. Welcome, Richard. I am so very excited to have you join and share your immense body of wisdom around health and healing. So uh, come on out and let everybody know what you're all about, why you're here, why you do what you do, and let's just have a really fun conversation. Oh, great. Well, thank you for inviting me. I've uh, been looking forward to this meeting um, for actually quite a long time since we've been uh, arranging it. Um, well, I'd, I've been involved in, I suppose, energetic healing, which is really one way of putting it, for over 30, coming up to 35 years now, uh, maybe 30, 35, somewhere around that, I forget. And I got into it because when I was younger, my mum got breast cancer. I was told by the oncologist back then that she'll be fine. And she wasn't. And she had all the best treatment at the time, the chemotherapy, the radiotherapy, the full mastectomy, so all the surgery. She was part of the medical profession as well. And she died. And it was horrific. And we as kids went through quite a challenging time. Uh, my parents had divorced and it was an acrimonious divorce. And it was during the time when children um, usually would stay with the mother. But in those times, we actually stayed with my father. Uh, there were many reasons behind that decision. But principally, it, it tore the whole family apart. And I knew, just instinctively knew that that ripping apart of uh, my mother from herself and two other boys, uh, I'm the middle one, was the reason why she got the, the breast cancer. Um, why she died was another question altogether. But uh, that, that, I think, was the, the thing that spurred me on because when I spoke to various people and I just knew that there was this link, including medical doctors, including some very esteemed medical doctors, they all turned around and said, oh, no, there's no link. No, don't be stupid. Slap around the face and get on your way, which really shocked me. So you know, that's how I got into health and healing and, and looking at the energy, knowing that there was some stressful event that triggered or caused the body to, to get into disease. And there we go. That's a little bit of my story. And... Wow. Um, yeah, so sorry to hear that. That's just yeah. heart wrenching, right? When when you, yeah, um, it was a long time ago, though. You know, we've all lost loved ones along the way, and as horrible as it is, it also, I mean, uh, what I did was I, I used it, I guess, and it's taken me along a path now to understand why uh, disease really does happen. And it's, uh, I'm going to tell you something really interesting. One of my students has been asking, say, alternative or complementary areas, especially involved in coaching, is there anything that recognizes energetics as far as a, a discipline is concerned? No. So even though 30, well, when my mum died, it was, yeah, a good, um, oh, almost 40 odd years, no, 50 odd years ago. Not quite that, not that old, but... Uh, you know, that was really interesting to see this this body of of medical information absolutely dismissing anything to do with trauma and the link to, with disease. And even now, it's even in what I would consider a normal field of energetics, of understanding how trauma links to disease, still being pushed off to one side. And I know that your work, it... it totally shows that there is a link between the trauma and disease and what's going on inside the body and and gives us then once we understand that then gives us a way in to go and heal those types of things so on that note you have written probably one of the most profound books that i have ever read encompassing all parts of how we live your book is how can I heal? And I, I love, yeah, there you go. How can I heal? It, it's fantastic. And I, I love how you 
structure the story around a character going through the aha moments that you you take her through as well as as all the incredible information so can you kind of take us through that journey with the character and 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 how that how that works because it was just truly fascinating and you made it so inject or digestible right like it was like wow like i get this i get this it was so simple to understand all of these different complex issues but you make it just really potent and and amazing so i i just i just loved it i'll give you the the basic uh philosophy behind the book which is what you said i wanted it something that everybody could read and wasn't some sort of big tune um but i also wanted at the same time to be able to turn around to the uh people that just have dismissed this work of energetics for want of better or want of a better word and said oh it's just garbage and also the emotional bit and and really bring it out and show that it's real, that it really does. It, it, you know, there is great science behind all of it and that we need to pay attention. So the whole thing is about a story of a made up fictitious character called Marcy. She's made up because I wanted to take her through what I call five steps to healing energetically. And this was, again, over 30 odd years of of research, just bashing my head against a brick wall, trying to fathom out how can we assist someone to heal and and give them other choices that aren't available in your traditional medical environment. Um, I'll, I'll go through those five steps now, which is the first thing that you need to do is redress the stress or get rid of something called the Uden moment. I'll talk about that in a minute. What does the UDIN stand for? But these are the things that trigger the emotional uh, stresses. So, for example, an argument with someone turning around and saying, you know, I'm sleeping with your best friend or whatever. Um, and then that horrible leaving would be that uh, silence or whatever it is, that moment. Um, that's the, the the crux of it. That seems to mess up the whole body. Um, recent research as well. It seems to mess up the mitochondria, the melanin, and uh, the structured water. You hear me talk more about that. Um, and I'll go back to that Uden moment. And then the next thing that happens is that we get, uh, we need to address the toxicity in our body. Um, well, you know that from the fascia. As you start to break down the fascia, stuff comes up. And these. Uh, it's it's also the release of that garbage as of, toxic chemicals that we're bombarded with stuff that's going on in the sky stuff that's in our food stuff that's in our mouth with regards to amalgam fillings mold is another big one uh so all of those things and and uh, light as well I'm, I'm sitting in front of special lights at the moment that give a, a nice led uh they're led lights but the, the blue light that we have on mobile devices and the like is is another toxic thing. You know, it's like my uh, the, the third thing, and I'll, I'll go all the way through these again, was inflammation. Uh, again, very, very important with regard to the fascia. So inflammation is absolutely essential that we look at that, we address it, we understand it. And in my world, inflammation is a major part of disease it makes disease grow massively can be overnight it causes horrendous brain fog um, swelling in the belly swelling in all in all sorts of different other areas and uh and how do we deal with that what's causing that on a on an energetic or emotional level and what's actually causing that inside the body and how can we release that then changing the environment is the the fourth one and the environment is, well, I, I look at food, as for example, in that, and vitamins and minerals, just as an external way of dealing with stuff. And ironically, for example, when I was writing stuff about vitamins and minerals, I spoke to doctor friends of mine and said, well, what do you do with vitamins and minerals? What do you mean, vitamins and minerals? I said, well, what do you do? Do you heal people? No. And they, they spend like half a day at the university or school or whatever learning about vitamins and minerals that they're essential but they don't know how to use them so i went off and looked at that as an example but also changing your environment one of the reasons we moved from france uh, sorry from canada where you're from to france 
in uh, where I landed on the 2nd of March 2020 because I just knew something was going to go on uh, and uh, wanted to change our environment, give our family a different way of life. France is different in, in family life from where we were in Canada. Um, not saying that Canada isn't great. It, it was just we moved on from that. So changing your environment and also changing your perceptions as well. Last one is raising your energy. And I think this is one of the most exciting pieces because we have what triggers the disease, but also something I call coined the next moment in our lives, which is this whole idea that our diseases, our issues, our pains actually show us the way forward. So inside that area is really what that disease is wanting to point us towards, which is, I mean, plain the obvious, isn't it? But do we ever address any of those things? Absolutely not. So it's about, I take uh, Marcy through this journey all the way through, uh, dealing with the stress, dealing with the toxic toxicity, toxic relationships, as well as physical toxic stuff, dealing with inflammation, dealing with the environment, and then basically raising her energy. So that's that's basically what the book is about. Um, can I just show you another interesting fact? I think that people, I, I'm very proud of this bit. Some people won't be. They say, well, that doesn't make any difference. And in the past, it didn't make much difference to me. But this is the book. Um, seems like a lot to read, but as I said, there's this interaction between me and Marcy at every chapter. That's hilarious. Like you make it very entertaining. Well, I wanted it not to be this really dark, horrible, nasty thing, but just a, a conversation and showing what actually goes on in the sessions that I do. And we're, we're doing it on Zoom as well, um, as an example, or on a video conferencing. I didn't want to name Zoom. But I also then went and researched into all. So the, I, there are over 1,600 citations of which I would say over 80% of them are medical and scientific, which then branch into other uh, citations and other meta-analysis and all this other sort of stuff. Um, and I took out the relevant paragraphs that relate to everything. It took me nine months to compile that alone. And I'm I'm saying that because you know, what, the, the topics that I cover inside here are so outside the realm of most people's understanding and they don't believe that it's real. Yet these are searchable links online. Many of them PubMed. If you don't know what PubMed is, it's medical literature that's published. Um, you know, and it's, this is not woo-woo la-la. I suppose I want to explain what energetics is in a minute. But hopefully we can go down that avenue and look at it uh, when I talk about mitochondria, melanin, and destructive water. But that's why I did it. That's that's really the reason why I put all this stuff together is so that people could go, huh, this is real. This is true. And we should pay attention and understand that you know, if you're holding on to negative emotions, it's going to cause a problem inside your body. And it's so very exciting because to know that there's a pathway, um, so many people just accept what their life is, has been, and is going to be. And yet you give this very, this very, again, palpable roadmap, right? To, to get people from the stress and the dis-ease that they're in and, and the perception of life. Because, I mean, so many people are, are, are just literally surviving and we're built to thrive. Yet most people are just really going day by day, like, you know, doing doing so much less than what we have the capacity to do as humans. And I mean, like, it's just so amazing that we're here at this time right now. Like the world is is in this place of upheaval and nobody knows what's going to actually happen. But when we can raise that frequency, that energy in ourselves and infect and affect each other, the possibilities are really quite exciting. I think we are in a, a very big awakening stage, uh, talking to people around the world and they're just sitting down in coffee shops and they're going, well, what went on during the COVID years? And they go, yeah, it was a scam. Really? You you believe that? Yeah, yeah, totally. And they're just everyday people just saying this stuff and just, you know, and they're not getting it on this. 
either. They're not getting it as they go through Facebook. They go, oh, no, that's all captured. <laughs> you just go, OK, all right. Yeah. So I don't need to say anything. Some people are still well into it, but the majority no, they've uh, they've moved on and they're questioning now their politicians, they're questioning health care, they're questioning the people that are governing them, they're questioning the people that actually are imposing the rules. And yeah, we're in a very exciting time. And I believe that it's going to get worse before it really does get better because there's still a lot of people that need to be slapped around the face and told, wake up, you know, the, the world's a wonderful place. Come and see it. Because all you know is what's in there. And that's all you see. But look outside. Look outside of you. Yeah, it's kind of uh, like the healing crisis. I mean, you know, things when you start to, you know, agitate what has been, you know, we've got to let go. And and there's a process around that. So let, let's dive into Marcy's Uden moment. And let's kind of give people this understanding of how to track back to those sources of dis-ease and and what that looks like going forward i could show you a, a, i've got a, a video that actually sort of has her um would, would that be worth doing sure uh, and, and explaining well let me give people an idea uh it's um stressful events trigger disease so let, let me just share a little bit of a screen and i think i can where is it uh this one and why isn't that going to allow me to do the audio i don't know where is that um nope hold the shift to select multiple windows i don't want to do that doesn't matter we'll go with it okay so this is stressful events trigger disease it's around uh breast cancer marcy gets breast cancer um and this is really how it happens so uh let's come back to this there's a Uda moment which is this missing piece i think from disease and a UDA moment is an acronym. To be absolutely honest, it's something I coined many years ago because I couldn't remember the criteria. So I wanted something easy and it's just stuck. Um, anyway, UDA moment stands for something unexpected, dramatic, isolating, and no strategy. And I'll explain what that means. So here is the story of a UDA moment. Uh, imagine a husband and wife happily married over 30 years, kids, grandkids, and then one day. And by the way, this is what Marcy look like inside my mind as I started writing. Uh, writing. Um, and what triggers a uter uh, disease is a uter moment. So it's unexpected dramatic. And one day, uh, her husband walks in and says, uh, I'm sorry to tell you, darling, their Manhattan apartment uh, in New York, uh, but I've been sleeping with your best friend for the past um, six months and I really love her. He doesn't mention the name. And uh, uh, I'm leaving. I've packed my bags. That's a Uda moment. That's a Uda moment because it's unexpected and dramatic. Come on. There we go. 30 years of marriage. Let's just say he had no idea. I mean, couples bicker, but, you know, that's normal. But suddenly, something like that. And don't think it's unusual because it does go on. I've had clients like that. Um, and she isolating because she can't even speak to her best friend or any of her other friends. She doesn't want to embarrass them. It's very normal in the female world. Oh, by the way, the uh, the guilty partner is that um, is the, the person in the front there. And she's not going to know strategy. She's not going to say, that's OK, darling, you have a nice life. I'm logging on to a dating website right now. See you. Not going to happen. No way. OK. And it wouldn't even happen to a man. Or, you know, a woman, it, it's the same thing. So a Uda moment shakes a person's world apart. Uh, it has everything in it, including people's voices, touch, their feelings, their taste, their smells, plus their own words. Um, and it really does. I'm sorry about the shaking here, but you're here. Maybe. What kind of father are you? You're the most approved, most excuse for a man I've ever met. What kind of caregiver are you? What do you have to show towards your kids? And what's really interesting is these Uda moments get trapped in specific parts of the body. And you can see with that particular diagram, there's almost like an energy, which will be the normal energy flow. Maybe we can talk about energy later. Mitochondria, melanin, structured water are responsible for energy. And this water gets trapped, which makes it stagnant, I think, or it displaces the energy or the energy can't flow. That's what these traumas do. So where do they land? 
the interesting thing is, and this will absolutely surprise people, but I've got all the science to prove it, that Udin moments land in the heart first. Why in the heart? Because the heart has the biggest field around us. It's quite amazing, this, this field. And it goes out in a sort of elliptic, um, just a bit like the the way that the, the, the earth uh, goes around the sun. It's that elliptic area it doesn't go over the top or underneath it goes around the the sun's personal equator so we have an equator around us that heart and it appears that Udin moments are predestined to occur so the research shows that if we are going to have a Udin moment we know that it's going to happen anything from one and a half to seven seconds it's going to happen the heart actually changes its rhythm quite incredible so it lands in the heart or was it there already another question altogether but whatever let's just say it lands in the heart lands then in the brain it goes up into the brain and lands in a specific area of the brain based on the frequency of the uda moment so something that's ang makes us angry is something different from something that makes us sad as a frequency or something that makes us fearful or something that gives us loss. They're all different frequencies. So they land in different areas. They also land in the belly as well. Again, different structure to the frequency. Just think of something that uh, you can't, well, you swallow, but it's shit. Forgive me for using that word. I'm using it in the right way because that's where we store it, in our belly, so it can be passed out. Um, they said that, by the way, is the reason for Crohn's disease or irritable bowel syndrome. But then it also lands in our mitochondria, the structured water and the melanin. So Udins land in, or, uh, in organs and creates disease, but not straight away. There's a time lag. I think uh, that's basically that's the story of the Udin moment. I love that because the way I see it is as soon as there's some kind of a negative impact the unconscious response is to hold the breath. And if we, like that deer that survives an attack, don't shake it off in the moment, then from here, now we're breathing from this constricted space. And if the diaphragm isn't working properly and what area is being restricted will depend on how we then feed ourselves with oxygen going forward from that moment. So then we get locked in and then whatever cells aren't receiving proper blood and oxygen flow now don't have that direct communication with the brain because now they're shut off. So that's how I understand the whole trauma response and how it gets locked and stored in the tissue. Um, and, and then of course the diaphragm is the floor to the heart and the ceiling to the gut. So if it's not working properly and how that will impact our health going forward. And then again, like those memories get trapped as well. So we keep going through that repeating cycle of, you know, those little triggers and you're constantly in this state of, of that, that moment, even if it was decades ago, um, it feels like it's just right here because it's trapped in that breathing pattern. So that's my, my understanding um, just from my, you know, fascia basis. And it's true. It's, it's there, it's stored in the body. And that's the interesting thing when you talked about uh, it being stored in the body and the breath and everything else, the somatic experience, the, uh, the polar bear being uh, shot so they could, you know, the scientists could look at it. You can see this uh, online, can't you? But the polar bear is shot with a, a not, not with a bullet or anything, but with a drug so it can be then observed to check that it's okay or whatever the scientists are doing. And then as the polar bear starts to come back, it starts to shake as it's getting rid of the trauma. And this happens in animals. And we we can see this in very young animals and older animals. So what happens when we have a shock, as far as humans are concerned, we can hold this stuff in. And there is a reason behind that and how we actually do it, um, I believe, uh, because of consciousness. I mean, what makes us different from your basic animal is this crazy Ferrari brain that we have. Or I don't think it's just the brain, it's our nervous system because uh, it's all interconnected Th that bit is the bit that's so fascinating because it uh it it means that we can well, what are we doing with these events i think that that's very important i'm also going to say something else is that 
because of this Ferrari brain, because of the way that we've evolved over time to create you know, jets and cars and complicated machines and stuff like that, is that we are we've forgotten a lot about the basic natural elements, which we're sort of coming back to. And those natural elements are very simple to understand, whereas a Ferrari and all that other sort of stuff, what? That's just out there. And, or a, a car or a plane or whatever. The, the point I'm making is that we have this consciousness, which it doesn't mean to say that animals don't, but it is different. There's something different between a human and an animal. And that consciousness, I think, is the bit that is allows us perhaps to evolve to a higher state of understanding, whether it's a higher state of being, I don't know. And I think I believe that what we do when we have a Yuda moment is we we're, we're going through a learning process and then we're wanting to grow up. So spiritual element of that. And then we want to go beyond it. So I, the, uh, I think that that's what's going on is that we are, for want of a better word, evolving. And that's the whole reason behind it. And if we don't have the chance to address those problems, to learn from, to grow up from, to go beyond and perhaps reconnect with where we came from as the source, God, higher self, whatever it is. If we don't get to do that, then we uh, we store that stuff and then each day, if we've got that storage inside of us, we're then walking through the day going, huh, um, you know, you, you've got to deal with this. And we, we don't deal with it. So eventually it shows up in our world and it slaps us around the face until, no, you have to deal with this. This is like a, a big theme in your life. And because you're not waking up and we're showing it to you, you haven't dealt with it, what we're going to do is we're going to, make sure that you have a big enough shock that it could take you out if you're not careful. Uh, and those are the things that I think are causing disease because in the animal world, they don't really get disease like humans do. Very fascinating. Well, and what's fascinating too is, I mean, we teach fascia decompression on, to do on animals as well. And what is wild is how quickly they integrate the change. Unlike, I mean, and, and we can all experience this where, you know, you've, you've had a sore leg. So, and maybe for days, years, whatever. And so you're used to the compensation in the body and then you, you have a treatment. And, and sometimes like when I'm working on myself, I've, I've been used to something and then I get up and I, I fall into the pattern that I'm used to, as opposed to what is just in front of me, where with the animal, you know, you, you do the work and if they had a limp, you let them go and suddenly they're running. It's not like they have to process the change. The change is immediate for them where we have to let our brain catch up almost to where we are now because we have these patterns of what has been. So for us to be seeing each moment as a unique experience, as opposed to um, this, this patterning that we've adopted um, and I love it because Eckhart Tolle mentions like when we're when we're breathing diaphragmatically, we're living in the moment when we're breathing through the muscles of the upper chest, we're caught in ideas of past and future, which is where fear lives. So for all of us breathing from this space, we're connected to the past where if we're breathing diaphragmatically, each moment is a unique expression that we can choose to exist in whatever way we want. And animals just seem to naturally live in the moment. So, yeah, it is fascinating how. We're, we're wired to be um, sort of a, a higher frequency yet. <laughs> so many of us are stuck and caught in this lower dimension, really. I, I agree. I, talking about that, I mean, people won't know this, but our, um, how we were introduced was through a good friend of ours. I was just talking about, oh, talking with her earlier, uh, Dr. Marlene Siegel, who did the amazing work with animals and, um, and the decompression it's just incredible we we had um uh our, our dog was very old and he was in a lot of pain and she came over in june last year and helped us decompress his back and oh he he just oh he's felt so so much better you could see it in his body his pain disappeared and we were doing this regularly but he was he was very old and um he uh he passed on and he loved the cold. So he loved being in Canada, but didn't like being here at all because it got quite hot. Anyway, I, we digress. 
I agree with the the whole idea of what's going on in animals and what you were saying with the with the fascia. And I I think that what's um, what is also going on is something else inside the body, which is uh, w- which I'd like to share with you because I think your audience will then they'll never have come across this. I'm I'm pretty certain. I talked about three things. So I do that as well because I I think I I think from this work I've been able to piece together how the fascia is created and why do we get those memories? Because I know there's something else that does happen um, when we start to use the uh, the fascia and that getting stuck in one particular place and then coming back. And I know my wife looking at the Facebook page because, you know, we have these and they're great and we use them and we use them, you know, sometimes while we're sitting down watching something or actually physically go through a lesson. Uh, so I don't think a, a, we, we haven't experimented with this. We have. Um, and she was saying that one particular person was doing something on the back of the the, the leg um, and then a, an event came up. Well, I want to explain what's going on as far as that is concerned, because we know that what's going on in the cell is, is fascinating. And uh, um, I think I, I think what, I might just go into that slide again. I'm not going to go through everything because it could just be way, way too much. But this is new science uh, that you never knew. Um, and uh, let's go through that. Oh, keep missing this. Uh, a Uden triggers disease. I told you about that. They're mm-hmm. disruptive and stop light entering the body, which is really fascinating because if we think about what's going on as far as us experiencing the world it is really about light and if you read it a lot and i prove it in the book that we are light beings anyway uter moments are picked up by the melanin in the body which interact with the mitochondria what's melanin melanin is the stuff that's on the outside of your skin that when you expose it to sun you go uh, brown and you look gorgeous and but melanin's way way more interesting than just that uh, melanin uh, interacts with the mitochondria. What are mitochondria? I'll go on to that in a second. Well, they're essentially the powerhouse of the cells. This stops light entering the body, specifically the frequency of the uterine moment. This causes mitochondrial dysfunction. Uh, if the ability of the mitochondria to make structured water is impaired, then disease occurs. So we have three areas that make you. And notice we're not talking about DNA here. Okay. That's not involved here. We're also not talking about nerves either. Well, we're talking about the precursors to this. Um, And we are talking about energy because these all are involved in energy. So what powers you are mitochondria? What's fascinating about mitochondria is we are going to talk briefly about DNA because they have their own DNA. And actually, there's lots and lots of work. um, uh, Professor Douglas Wallace has done loads and loads of research into the fact that practically all the chronic diseases and many other diseases are because there's a dysfunction in the mitochondrial DNA, not in our cells DNA. Amazing stuff. So uh, mitochondria are also bacteria. They're not human, but they actually came into the cell about one and a half million years ago to uh, live together. And um, I have a picture, I think, of a mitochondria. Where is it? I'll have to come back to that. So they're derived from bacteria. They have their own DNA. They live in symbiosis with the human cell. They produce something called adenosine triphosphate or ATP. This makes heat that stretches the water inside your cells. And there are about 1,000 mitochondria in each cell. In fact, there are a bit more than that. You have... um, 10,000 in your retina, 10,000 in your brain, 10,000 in your heart, nerves on a mitochondria, 10,000 probably more mitochondria in ovary cells, women only, obviously, no mitochondria in blood cells, mitochondria communicate via light. So, you know, all this stuff that you've been taught in traditional medicine, crazy. I think there's another one, mitochondria, um, well, there's also structured water, which is inside the deep lattice of the structured water is light. This light can transmit into the future and the past. We believe it is our creator. So structured water is very important. Um, actually, it is you. And structured water is different from bulk water. 
And there's a, a picture from Dr. Emoto, who you've come across. And I, I delved a way, way deeper than the pop psychology of, of Dr. Emoto, but his pictures are wonderful. This is love and gratitude. But mitochondria make structured water, which is like a crystal. They create a fourth phase of water, which is like jelly, uh, by using protein, heat, and, and water. And structured water makes living things, including your cells. Structured water has an electrical charge that powers your melanin. Right. That's so, funny. yeah, unbelievable stuff. I mean, it's just, I don't think anybody's ever quite pieced this all together. Structured water, here's a motor again, unstructured water on the left. Um, I think that's from the uh, Tokyo River on the right. It's, uh, uh, I think it's been blessed with love and gratitude, that one. Wow. Structured water has electricity. We know that from the work of Dr. Gerald Pollock. In fact, it came from a guy from Gilbert Ling, incredible scientist. And back in the 1950s, it was just dismissed. Oh, you're, you're, go away. Um, don't talk to us, but he worked it all out and Pollock actually went and did loads of other research. The book's not the best book to read, but well, uh, and so I think uh, what I can do is just show you why is structured water so important because then you'll suddenly go, okay, which is I think what's going on in the fascia. So when we take structured water, if we take water and we put it next all to a hydrophilic surface, which is a water loving surface, you can see what happens is that water-loving surface turns into a crystalline structure. They call that the exclusion zone. It's known as H3O2. The other interesting thing that it does is it repels certain minerals and uh, attracts other ones. And so this is why it's called EZ, the exclusion zone. Okay, incredible work. That's Gerald Pollock's work. But notice it also has a charge to it. In fact, it has a negative charge, meaning it, it, um, it don't get confused with it being horrible and nasty as being negative. It's just a charge to it. It has electron, electron charge to it rather than a positive or uh, the other side to it. And by the way, the amount of um, the, uh, how big that exclusion zone, I'm sorry, I'm going to get slightly technical if people are from a, a America, it's about um, 500 nanometers. So that's half a millimeter, which is huge, Ooh. absolutely enormous. Now, your body is full of this stuff, your cells, it's full of this stuff. And the question is why? Anyway, fourth phase of water, solid ice, fluid water, gel, H3O2. And then the fifth, fourth phase is gas and steam. So I want to show you how you make gel. I'm sorry, it wasn't going to go into all these slides. I want to add some other slides, but it doesn't matter. Say you make jelly. I think these are fascinating slides anyway. You take this powder, which is a protein powder. In this case, it's got a coloring in it. You add hot water. So mitochondria make heat. Okay, that's what they do through this thing called the citric acid cycle. You then stir that up. Well, you wouldn't do that in yourself, but anyway, it doesn't matter. You get in the protein which you have in your body through amino acids, which create protein, and then it turns into jelly. Now, that's what's inside your cell, not water. It's not the water that comes out of your tap or your faucet. It's jelly. And that, I think, is just like mind-blowing. People realize you just can't put a needle in someone and the water spurts out. It doesn't because it's jelly. Jelly. Crystals, crystals, it's fourth phase of water, electrical charge. Why have we got this electrical charge? It's amazing. So what's inside a cell? Cell membrane. That's the bit I want to talk about, this cell membrane. We also have this nucleus, which is the middle bit, where the DNA structure of it is, is there. But it's also uh, DNA is actually an antenna. When you really look at the structure of how it's made, by the way, only a model. We don't really know whether it's true or not. Find that interesting. May be true, may not be. Mitochondria. Now, mitochondria are those little dots inside there. And, you know, you think there are way more mitochondria inside your body than there are human cells. Structured water, which is known as cytoplasm. So fascia and cells. We have uh, fascia. I want to talk about fascia and inflammation and then 
how they link. So here we have a healthy cell with equal negative charge in the middle and this other charge outside. So from that earlier program, that all makes sense. Um, then we have healthy cells have boundaries around. Them. So we have cells that the, naturally they have this nice boundary around it that uh, keeps the cells perfectly positioned. Each part of our body, each organ has a different position based on the amount of charge that they have in, inside the cells and how much they have around them. And so they have this boundary due to the negative charge that is causing the cells to repel each other. Do you remember your basic science get two mag uh, magnets? Because these are also magnetic as well as electric. Put them together and they repel each other. So there's this natural field around them. So when we have an unhealthy cell, the unhealthy cells do not repel each other. That water inside is no longer being structured because of something called mitochondrial dysfunction. So what causes mitochondrial dysfunction uh, is toxicity. We also know that what or, uh, toxicity from external stuff like electromagnetic fields, amalgam fillings, mold, this, this stuff, uh, the blue light from your mobile phones, from your screens, all of that is causing the uh, these uh, the mitochondria to become dysfunctional. The, the, the dysfunctional. So if it can't make the structured water, the negative charge goes down. So the cells start to not function correctly. They lose their boundary and they come together and uh, they clump. Um, then some of the cells die because the mitochondria indicate to the cell, hey, I want to get out of here. This environment's no longer any good. So then we see water splurging out and, and the boundary of the, the cell is no longer there and causing localized inflammation. Now, this is the bit, I've only just put this slide together. It's not inside the book because you've read the book. This is what I think is truly going on. There's a lipid cell layer is left behind as a residue from the dead cells or the cells that have exited and clump together to create the fascia. Now, here's the important point. That lipid cell, which is made of fat, still has the memory of what was inside the cell in the first place. That's where it gets really interesting. Very, wow, I love this, yeah. So hopefully this is right. I don't know. I know the other slides are right, but when we first met, I thought, how is that happening? So as you break down that fascia, you're going to go and release stuff from there. I think then people will say, what about cancer? So I just put that last cell in there. Cancer cells multiply because the mitochondria stop metabolizing oxygen. The cancer cells are very inefficient and make uh, making ATP. They have no boundaries and clump together, causing a lump. So there's a difference between a cancer, the tumor, and what's really going on inside fascia. Uh, so I think that that's also fascinating, perhaps to consider. I know the latter uh, picture is is correct, but it's this bit that I think is so important because it's that memory of the of, of, of that's gone on. That structured water is still inside the lipid fat layer, holding on as a memory because we haven't learned. We've not. Uh, grown up from the instance, maybe we've learned from it, but we haven't grown up. We haven't evolved. We haven't gone beyond it. We haven't reconnected with that light and brought the light into the area, the oxygen into the area, the breath into the area to break it down. And then as we we go into um, pushing against somewhere, and I don't know, what people were saying this that oh, I had a horrible memory come up of what I think it was. This person had uh, was doing something on their their legs and they said and i remember my cat used to claw at me and it really hurt and it just popped up out of the blue so there's you know that's this stuff actually working and so i i think that that's that's wonderful i've certainly had great experiences just going into the area going out 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 oh and about a minute later the pain's less Two minutes later, it's practically gone. And then it shows up somewhere else. So you move the block elsewhere and go, now, what was that? <laughs> why am I Why am I experiencing this horrible event? Because it can be. Sometimes you get really sad and anxious or horrible. You know, you go, ah, it's not just the pain, is it? So there we are. You're literally going back to that moment 
And then like the animal, you're starting to shake, like you're, you're, you're finally letting that energy go. So then it comes at you with this surge. And I love how you've put those pictures together because it so represents the way I view things from the um, perspective of optimal space, because everything we want to do is maintain the space. And if the space is maintained through breath and conscious alignment, then there is that boundary. It's when we start compressing you know, like we're pushing everything together. And if we don't release it in the moment, then those cell membranes, they start to deteriorate because they don't have the conscious awareness from the person to say, Hey, if I've been squished over here, like I'm, you know, sitting and I, I should have a, you know, correct alignment for my rib cage. But if I'm always sitting compressed in front of a computer for years and decades, this space between the ribs and the pelvis now it's decreased. And now here's those magnetics, which is why I believe there's that 2000 pound per square inch seal of the adhesions onto bone and everything around it, because literally now it's a magnetic seal. So again, like, and I, I reference the magnets all the time. If, if they're far enough apart, they don't have an attraction, put them close together and they seal with the force, try to pull that apart, almost impossible to do, if not impossible, but you can slide it apart. So when we go in through the process, we're shearing and we're putting that space through the, sh the twisting action because energy moves in waves and spirals. So we also age in that forward rotational direction. And then based on if we're not breathing and then here's a traumatic moment where I hold my breath. Now I'm, you know, sending that much less oxygen to the cells and the areas of compression aren't going to be receiving, you know, any of that life. So then those cells are just like kind of over here, not part of the equation, yet they're still part of the equation because there's that memory and, and keeping us in that traumatic loop. So once we open that space up, now we can actually say goodbye to all of that negative energy. And then we can even perceive the event from a different perspective and then rearrange your whole patterning of thinking. I think that when you say all of that, you mentioned something about spirals, uh, which is, well, again, I, I reference all that spiral stuff in, in the book. Um, and uh, spirals have a different energy when they're going clockwise to anti-clockwise. And so it, it's interesting when we're doing doing the blocks, are we, you, you talk about that fascia, if it's in one long string, a bit like a, a rope but actually if you take this rope and then you just twist it the other way you can actually make it come apart um so by the way as as far as people are concerned when we talk about energetic spirals are really they are just incredible the mathematics behind that we have spheres and we have cubes and spheres and cubes and spheres and cubes and you add energy to it and they turn into spirals or water seeds which is how water works and there's all the research around that it's just uh, unbelievable absolutely unbelievable in fact there's a big water conference coming on in october this year down in lisbon in portugal which uh i'm going to go and we're, oh we're, how exciting yeah so we're going to see how how that well, all have a, another connection after you're there so we can learn everything that you learn there i'm i'm so looking forward to that um because uh water has this incredible uh it does something that we we as the human race uh know about but have completely ignored i mean and i don't know why it's been dismissed we could postulate but let's forget about the postulation it doesn't help us what the information is now available and i think what's happening when we look at um water molecules and we look at the fascia and we look at fat as you twist it it breaks down. And I think it's then that's releasing of the water of that electrical charge that gives us that <gasps> feeling as well. And the recollection is, is just just amazing. I know we're sort of pontificating. We're talking about how amazing it is, but it really does work, doesn't it? That's what, I, that's what blew me away. And I'll t tell you a story. You, you sent these over to me and I was in the middle of writing the book and I had some conversations with you and, and really couldn't get into it and was in quite a bit of pain, actually, because four years of writing that book that's how long it took and then nine a part of that was nine months putting citations together and i really didn't get the time to sit down and start working with this stuff and my wife my wife took it on first and she was doing the things and pushing up against the the stuff and i was uh, and then i thought well she was getting great benefit from it 
And I thought, oh, I'm so much pain. I better go and do this. And went, ouch. And your name was a bit, you know, it was, <laughs> the Allah, what are you doing? And then, but it was, it, things shifted. And I went, wow, that that's working. And that's working really well. And then it made me go, why? Having written the book, why is this going on? And now you've given that spiral bit. That's even more exciting to understand the, the reasoning behind it. Anyway, I don't know where we go from there. <laughs> well, let's dive into the toxins, um, because, of course, I mean, like you, you've got so much in your book about what's causing sickness and then ways of approaching this. So dive in a little bit about that, because I, I think it's fascinating. And we, we need to know these things, because, I mean, if, if you don't know, you don't know that that mercury filling that, you know, you trusted that's been in your mouth for decades is causing potentially you know, all these other things as well as all the other toxins. So talk a little bit about what we can do to detoxify. Little story, I guess that's in the book. Um, I met up with a really, who's a wonderful friend of mine. I only spoke to her quite recently called Dr. Rebecca Garcia at uh, a thing called the Academy of Comprehensive and Integrative Medicine, which where we were training in Dallas. Um, and this is a, a group of just, alternative and integrative medical doctors and practitioners from around the globe, but mostly the U S and we were looking at uh, electromagnetic fields and other things, but basically what was going on was um, uh, I met up with Dr. Rebecca who did some incredible work on thermography. So she had a thermography wand and you put this wand on different areas, basically they're acupuncture points. So that fascinates me because I know quite a bit about acupuncture. Not a tremendous amount. I don't claim to know great, but I know a little bit enough to be interested in it. And from that, we had a, a, a picture of the body. And uh, w when you look at that, she said, oh, you've got some stuff going on in your mouth. And I said, yeah, um, I've got some problems. Uh, well, she says, you've got amalgam fillings in there. They're there, 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 and there, and there. And that is a root canal. I went, huh? How do you know that? You can see that on the picture. She says, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, okay. She says, yeah, it's it's stopping the flow of energy in your body. I went, and she said, I think you have mold uh, toxicity because uh, I was complaining that my nose was always blocked up. And, and I went, yeah, yeah, that's true. She said, well, you need to get your amalgam fillings removed. So I went, okay, because <laughs> I knew that was going to be painful. Why was it painful? Well, I did have them removed. Uh, I thought I had five amalgam fillings in there, but there were eight. Some had been covered up with um, white fillings. Uh, and I all had them all removed in one go. Wow. That must have been quite the ordeal. Without anesthetic. Wow. <laughs> I know how to do that because I'm trained in uh, clinical hypnotherapy. So I went, oh, I'll go into trance and have them all done all in one session, which was actually a mistake because mercury is so highly toxic to the brain and the whole nervous system. And just expose yourself to, well, if you look online, you expose yourself to mercury, it will just destroy mitochondria. It will just, I mean, they just come along and they, they're done. Um, and since they structure the water and give you life, you want to guard them with your life. So mitochondria do, well, mercury does that. Now, there are pictures online and there's one with Dr. Oz. Um, people will know who that is, I'm sure. And he gets a special cabinet and he takes uh, a tooth from a person which is, has an amalgam filling. And they, they have this in a special container and they have a mercury uh probe that's measuring the mercury and as they take this mercury filling i can't show it quite clearly and just brush it with a normal toothbrush the amount of um i suppose mercury that's being put into the air is so high that if they did this within that audience without it being captured in this uh, this special area then they would have to evacuate the building. Wow, that is... I know. And people are walking around with this inside their mouth, and I was doing it with, with eight of them. 
Holy smokes. Insane. So you, we need to be very, very aware of that. And by the way, there's a way that you can get rid of the amalgam fillings. Please don't do what I did. One, th- was that really painful? Actually, because I know what I was doing. But if you don't know what you're doing, please, you know, go and get it done correctly. I just tell the, anybody who does it, uh, you've got to go to a quarter and do that once every six months. So if there's one up here, you check. Is that where you've got to start? And a good doctor will know what they're doing. Um, good dentist will, and they'll measure the correct filling to take out using electricity. Okay, so they actually get a, a like a, a multimeter inside there and measure the voltage so that you can tell which one is the, the most prominent to, to remove. So you, it's, um, it's very important that you understand that particular piece because uh, don't just go off and do it like I did use Novocaine it's, it's all right. I'm just was wanting to do it for the for the fun of it <laughs> story yeah but also there's um uh what are called root canals now root canals also are really really dangerous as Dr Rebecca says if you have a root canal get it removed if you've got a disease but get it removed just have it taken out so we know uh, that each one of the teeth is connected through the meridian lines throughout the whole of the body. And meridian lines are how the energy goes and travels down at specific frequencies to different organs. Um, that's the Chinese acupuncture system, but uh, it's real. Uh, there's uh, science that actually proves that to be the case, um, where I think the Taiwanese actually injected a radioactive, very light radioactive isotope, and then measured it going up the whole meridian. Um, and it doesn't follow the nerves. It follows fascia. It follows nerves. It follows other pathways as well. So uh, th- that's the bit that transmits the energy down and up you. Uh, and this is probably the light that's going through the mitochondria and also the melanin. I want to talk briefly about melanin because this is all interconnected. Melanin it's the stuff that's on the outside your skin, but it surrounds it's the, the, the brown bit that goes around the mitochondria. It's inside your brain. Neuromelanin is a part of your brain called the substantia nigra, which is Latin for substantially black. And it's a dense part of the body, uh, brain part of the brain. It, melanin is everywhere. And it's your central processing unit of you. It is the bit that brings in the information and processes it and then chucks it out so every single thought that you're having every single image that you're seeing everything is being processed through melanin and if melanin doesn't function then you don't function and what destroys melanin is the toxicity of using this stuff especially late at night because it turns it from melanin it makes it turns into dopamine which which is why you like watching these things it's why you get addicted it's like oh because it's the nice fluffy chemical that is released inside the brain specifically but that's one part of it so this is another toxic chemical that you have to be aware of i'm not saying don't use them because they're fabulously um useful devices and so and so is your computer but just be aware that um, you can get addicted to these things. And what it's doing is it's breaking down the melanin, which then causes you to not be able to respond correctly, which also can cause you to become addicted to stuff, which then takes you away from your real true nature of who you really are and gets you locked inside the matrix. So that's another part. How does that connect to the whole, I mean, topic of vitamin D then? Because of course, when we're in the sun, we create vitamin D and then the melanin is connected to that. So is, is there a discussion around that? Absolutely. Melanin thrive on vitamin D. So you're told by your doctor, don't get out in the sun. Guess where I was today and why I'm slightly red. I'm sitting outside in the midday sun, no sunglasses, shirt off. OK, uh, I must have been out there an hour and a half. I was talking with Dr. Marlene Siegel, actually. Um on FaceTime audio, so she. <laughs> but the the point is that I'm doing that, and I will go outside in the middle of the sun, in the middle of the um, summer, 
out there and I'll be out three or four hours. Okay. Three or four, no sunscreen, no sunglasses, you know, completely exposed to the sun. And the other interesting thing is I don't get burnt. Why I don't get burnt is because I haven't fed my body with linoleic acid, which comes from the seed oils, which are salt, told are great for your heart. It's absolute garbage. I cover it in the book extensively. All the research is there. Um, and yeah, I just don't burn, which is just crazy. And I go brown. Um, so It's you fascinating know. because I used to, as a you know um, younger person, I used to fry. Like I would... I would just get red. I would peel. That was my cycle where since I've been doing this decompression work, I tan now. I don't burn. And I feel it's because there's a depth that the heat can go through. So if like my body was so cold before and nature abhors a gradient. So suddenly I'm in the sun and then there wasn't enough absorption of that because I was so bound and frozen and rigid in my body. So it just it fried as opposed to that absorption. And then because I don't burn anymore either. And I, you know, I don't use any sunscreen. I'm in the sun way too long for what would be traditionally thought as a healthy thing. And, and yet, I mean, it's, it's fascinating because I mean, I, yeah, I love it. (laughs) Exactly. And people go, Oh, but what about melanoma? Well, melanoma is your melanin trying to reach the surface to get its energy because that's what it thrives on. It thrives on this light. So vitamin D is not te- is not a vitamin. It's actually a hormone and you need it. And what actually triggers vitamin D is natural light or that hormone. You need that hormone to function because you don't make it in your body. You don't make vitamin C, actually, which is why it's essentially you pick up vitamin C as well from externally through fruit and, and vegetables. So these are... What is this all doing? These things support our system. And I've told you what how important melanin is, that it's in your brain, it's in your nervous system, it supports the mitochondria. If the melanin is not there, if it's depleted, this is what happens. You get brain fog, you can't focus, you lack energy, you can't process information. I've just written an article for the Bioregulatory Medical Institute, of which... Um, uh, I'm recently on the board of that. Uh, I mention that because Mar- Dr. Marlene's on there as well. I don't know whether you are, but you sh- should be. But whatever, I'll mention your name. Um, now, the, what, what's that? It's all about looking at uh, looking at healing disease by dealing with energy and assisting the body through energy. So why is that all important when we look at melanin is because if the melanin and the mitochondria and the structured water, the structured water is not structured, uh, which, by the way, what stretches it as well is um, ultraviolet, sorry, infrared light that actually causes it to grow bigger, which is why you need to be out in the sun. Uh, also, the um, the melanin is essential because that's the bit that transmit or transmits, receives and transmits information. So if you want to make yourself clever, get outside in the sun. Uh, also, the mitochondria thrive on sunlight as well. You need this stuff. Um, by the way, in order to get vitamin D, you can't do that all year round, especially in Canada. You, it's There's only certain parts of the year. There's a great free app called d minder pro will tell you when it's available and when it's not it's all about the radiant of how the angle of the sun in the sky very useful on that you need to supplement um so that's a, that's a useful tool uh, i can actually show you that because i use that all the time um where is it here it's d minder pro there it is so you can actually see what it looks like it's called d minder pro it's it's free so it shows you where the sun is and uh, that figure at the bottom there is not true because I know why. Can you spell? Can you spell that? So that's an app. Yeah, it's called D as an letter D. Minder, yeah. M I N D E R. Okay. Oh, app. Yeah. Put it on okay. your phone, free, and you can look at how much UV light you're going to get. And like I said, um, no sunglasses. If you have sunglasses on, you'll burn. Yeah, because you're telling us. The 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 uh, 
your skin that it's uh you well the amount of sun that you're getting on there is all incorrect so you've got to take the sunglasses off that's fascinating <laughs> I mean, yeah. I haven't sunglasses in four five six maybe six years i like them they look cool but yeah. they're not good for you um uh, the other thing as well is, yeah, so you need to get out in and watch the early morning sun come out. That's absolutely essential. It has a completely different set of light as well, the early morning sun. Quite interesting. And so is the same sun going down as well is, is completely different. So I guess that's why so many cultures, like they, they have ceremonies around, you know, the sunset and sunrise. Well, I was lucky enough to go and join the Druids. Uh, I've done it a couple of times when I was living in England um, to do the, uh, going into the circles, the the stone circles. And I remember 23rd of June it was, and the, just uh, what they call the heel stone, the sun coming up over the heel stone. It was just a magical, magical moment. Yeah, absolutely. But we couldn't take photographs or anything because, well, just... You weren't allowed to, but and we're all running around in these funny smocks and everything. It's <laughs> quite something. Anyway, there we are. It's uh, another story for, for another day. But um, that was before I really understood this whole sun piece and, and earthing as well. You need to put your feet on Mother Earth, barefoot, actually on Mother Earth. You can't actually do that that easily. Then find a way that you can earth your, your body. Very difficult in an apartment, but possible to do in other places. So these all add to creating that jelly inside the cell, which then fuels the mitochondria, which fuels the melanin. It's those three that seem to be the case. And when you're actually doing that, um, you will have or make or create a, a significant change in your body and assist with the health. And because of your book, I purchased the analemma. Oh, um, yeah. Which yeah. I love because, you know, here's this beautiful crystal wand and you stir your water and you can feel the water getting thicker and more velvety and smoother. And there's a different taste to it. And it's so simple. Like, you know, with our crazy world, I love anything that is so simple that you can travel. Like there's all these, I, I know there's lots of ways you can structure water, but the simplicity of the analemma um, is just so wonderful. I should go and grab it just so I can show people. Yeah, show, show people. I'll talk a little bit about it. Um, so Analema Wand is structured water in the second uh, uh, chapter in the book called The Light. There's one called The Dark and then there's The Light. Um, I came across uh, this wand and uh, show people the wand because people yeah. think so, that it's yeah, it, this nice little tube. You just undo it and then here you go. And you've got this beautiful structured water in this crystal that you then and just... Put into a into glass water or... and you stir it. Oh, it's going to fall. And you stir it. And you said for about um, a liter of water, you stir for a minute. Yeah. And well, 30 can... seconds. 30 okay. seconds. Okay. Yeah. I'm probably taking longer. Yeah. But you can see it. Like within yeah. seconds, you're like, wow, the water's actually changing consistency. So people, just so they understand, what are you doing with that water is you are stretching the water inside the normal water, and it doesn't have to be filtered water, though I do suggest you actually uh, filter it to some form of carbon filter. Um, and there's even some work now that's for showing distilled water has an electrical charge, which I wasn't aware of, and I'm doing some research into that for later on. But basically, and that's actually, yeah, it has the same effect. Uh, I know this sounds a bit crazy, but um, as drinking your own urine, which has people go oh that's disgusting no it's sterile <laughs> you can't actually die from drinking your own urine but it is full of stem cells stem cells it's full of loads and loads of healing uh chemicals it will heal all sorts of things like even i don't know i have to try it uh take make your um teeth uh whiten your teeth and actually bring back your hair color wow Jonathan Otto, John, is it Jonathan Otto? Uh, yeah, his, he does lots and lots of things. Is is 
looking into it right at the moment. I think Nathan Crane, who you may have come across, I think is doing a- Well, I'm going to the, I'm on the Holistic Leadership Council. So heading over to Mexico in 10 days. And it's, you know, Nate, that's how I met Dr. Marlene Siegel was through the council. So Nathan and Marlene are on that council together. And yeah, so I'll get to meet him in person in a couple of weeks as well, as well, Jonathan Otto's on that council. So, you know, these these people are, the, I think Nathan is doing a 90-day uh, uridology, I think that's what they call it, uh, which is drinking your own urine for 90 days and then measuring the effects. Mm -hmm. So, you know, th this is all structured water. It comes from your cell, it comes from the plasma. Um, now, let's go back to the wand. The wand was amazing. So this comes from a, a, a doctor friend of mine called Dr. Eric Larica, who's in um, the Netherlands. I won't be for too long. But basically, it uh, he was going... They did some research. Uh, they took over Professor Pop's um, laboratory, and Professor Pop was looking at light that was being emitted from cells, um, as they particularly was looking at seeds as they germinated. And they noticed that there was this this sort of window when you took genetically modified seeds. It it had less access to than a normal seed than to a biodynamic seed, which is beyond organic that there seemed to be more light being able to be emitted and entered as these seeds germinated so they also then started looking a little bit deeper and they said well what about the water so they started changing the water and talking about toxins again uh, they took water that had been sitting on a wi-fi router and they noticed that it completely destroyed the water and the seeds didn't matter what type of seeds wouldn't germinate and they did that but they took water from other places, then it would germinate. Uh, and then they uh, noticed that there was different types of water. So they went to ask the question, what is water? And over lots of research and going to the various um, conferences and meeting up with people, including uh, Nobel laureates and, and people like that, um, and Emoto's group of people, they... Uh, uh, and there's loads of Russian scientists and everything. it's just incredible work. And Gerard Pollack, who actually runs the whole thing. They asked the question, well, what is water? And none of the scientists could answer that question. So they went and answered it themselves. And out of that research of which they spent millions of their own money and other uh, people's uh, people that invested in its money who couldn't dictate what they did with the the end result, it wasn't backed by Big Pharma or somebody like that. That was very important that they, that happened. Is that they created that water inside that wand, and that water is so powerful that when you use it and stretch the water inside a glass, you are giving the that same energy inside yourself. It's called the mother water, and it is uh, whatever it touches, it touches, and it it changes the structure of that water and you go ah oh, this is garbage they've had incredible results with uh just growing they say they bought a whole um coming from the netherlands a whole uh <laughs> they were working with cucumbers and they noticed that these cucumbers changed and they they went from the they're normally female and they started creating males they started producing more fruit over a longer amount of time i mean it's just crazy stuff pigs as well they just changed the waters so they had less miscarriages all sorts of other weird stuff the one that really got me and i talk about this in the book is they took bricks and just changed the water and the structure of the bricks uh using the water the analema water just passing the normal water over this wand it's a slightly bigger structure and that water changed the the structure of these bricks so so much so that they were less weight and stronger. I mean, yeah, exactly. So you go, no, no, this is just garbage. But then they've done loads of other research. They've been doing other research in the US uh, where they've taken people um, and uh, they've noticed that their diseases are shifting and changing. I certainly, for the first time in a long, long time, in fact, I can't even remember when, when we first got it, we were just drinking this water. We couldn't get enough of it. It was almost like our body was just seeping it back in. We just needed that water. Um, and actually, since we've had it, we don't drink as much water as we normally used to. 
because we don't need as much because it's we're being hydrated. Fascinating stuff. And well, the science and is all that. And the ease of it, right? Like, you know, and it's what, about 174 US, I yeah. believe, what yeah, I paid. Right and yeah. So yeah, you, you take it with you everywhere you go. You go to a restaurant, you know, get your water all structured, take it with you on a trip. It's so easy. So all things, I mean, this is just so important. Um, put it in your wine. It makes it taste different. I mean, I, I, my background was in the wine trade, so I would take, I've taken it, taken a glass of uh, red, and then not spun it, and then another glass, side by side, spun it, and then taste them, and they taste different. How bizarre is that? I've even well, done it blind, so someone else has done that, and I don't know, and I've gone, that's the one with the analemic, that's the one with that. And I go, just mad. Uh, and I so, would imagine if you do that for your pets, they're going to always be drawn to the analemma water because they know. We, we uh, with our dog, he always had the filtered analemma water, always. And I, I swear it added life, uh, a lot more longer life to him. He was a rescue and was pretty badly treated. He had no teeth. Uh, he had to have them all removed. Um, he was also jab before he came over here and that's where he got a big large tumor on his leg which we then helped that was the reason why we used the the stuff from marlene the, the and your work um with him which just helped tremendously we relieved the pain but he lived till he was 16 so he had a good innings i wish he'd stayed longer because i miss him like crazy yeah yeah, yeah. Wow. that's the way it well, Richard, this has been just fascinating. So first of all, uh, we'll put your um, your link for people to purchase your book. Yes. In fact, if they go to richardfluke.com, in fact, they can find anything. They can even book a, book a free meeting with me to ask about you know, whether they, whatever they want to do, um, especially if they're dealing with a lot, really something very, very tricky. Um, that's what I specialize in. And uh, or if they want to train in what I do, then that's something else they can have a conversation with me about. Um, and also there, the book is there so they can click on that on the first on the front page. It's my name. And then you can it'll take you down into a page where you can click on it and it will then take you worldwide, wherever you are, to Amazon and then you can purchase the book. From and there. you even have a little bit about block therapy in your book. I mentioned you twice at the start and also at the end because yeah. you know it's uh, it, your work is just um, amazing. I'm just well, I'll be honest. When I first came across it, I said, "How does this work?" And then it all it, it all shifted and changed, and I went, "Wow, this is just fits just beautifully within the whole whole thing." And people don't have to sit there and suffer in pain like they used to. I've got rid of pain, which I didn't even think was possible my son recently had something with his knees and and his toe and i just actually got him on a block and said go on push on that and he's screaming a little bit and then he went oh it's all gone all right i'm better now and i keep checking with it but thanks to your work it was just just amazing so yeah well, and i think that's the point right there there's so many practical steps people can take to really shift gear and again really repattern how your entire life looks compared to where you thought it was headed so i would just want to thank you so much because again um most profound book i have ever read in the entirety of all of the different facets that you go that create dis-ease in the body and then steps that can be taken so highly recommend every single person reads it and we'll, we will have your information below so people can reach out to you and any last words no you put me on the spot there <laughs> Well, I've been talking for a bit. I'm going to say this. Healing is about energy. And it's about the flow of energy and where uh, it's displaced or there's too much of it. In other words, there's not enough or there's too much. Acupuncture really is, is very real as far as that is concerned. So when we address the body in that way, then healing is possible in so many other ways than where you know, traditional medical stuff is going. There's so many more choices. And, uh, and this is certainly one of the best for dealing with so many different things as well. Uh, well, thank you so much. Um, I can't wait. Let's definitely do this again when you're back from that water conference. I want to learn everything you learn. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> and again, thank you all for joining. I'm sure you have taken so much from this incredible information and definitely use Richard as a resource to help you find your way back to health. Thank you all so much and have a wonderful day.